Hello YouTube, Osak here, and I'm coming to you here on July the 23rd, Saturday, and I uh, hope this video finds everybody well. Uh, just wanted to share something. Uh, I had a, a gun show purchase, a gun show find, uh, a couple months back actually, but anyway, it's a uh, kind of a cool revolver, and I uh, just wanted to share it with you. It's um, something you're not going to see very often, uh, and that is a high standard Sentinel Mark III. This is a 357 Magnum revolver. Okay, and as you can see here, it's a pretty good size pistol, and it's going to look really familiar to you if you are uh, a fan of Dan Wesson models. Okay, this is essentially a Dan Wesson Model 15. Now, in 1972, 1973. Uh, high standard, uh, basically contracted with Dan Wesson to make these uh, make these pistols for him. And at that point in time, Dan Wesson was kind of in financial uh, straits, and uh, so I think it was something that really was uh, very well received. You can see it's got the uh, barrel nut there to secure the barrel in, so this can be removed. And I'll go over that in here in just a second. But it's a uh, six-inch revolver, and uh, you know, it's like I said, very much a, a Dan Wesson. You can see it's got the Dan Wesson lock work. I don't know if this is a short throw, what they consider a short throw, or a long throw. I know they changed because they had uh, apparently some difficulties with the short throw, and uh, so they changed over to a, a long throw type of a. Uh, mechanism for the uh, for the action okay but you can see it's got the Dan Wesson style lock up on the cylinder and it's got an adjustable rear sight okay and of course the barrel again is removable just like a Dan Wesson matter of fact the Dan Wesson toolkit which I have right here which is you can see the barrel wrench and the gap uh, you know, so you can set the gap and a couple of the uh, Allen wrenches that you would need to work on the pistol or work just fine and uh, are perfect for this one as well. Now, let me see if I can show you some of the markings. So the markings on the barrel basically say Dan Wesson over 357 Magnum and then it says Sentinel Mark III, M-K-I-I-I, Sentinel Mark III. And again, this is, uh, again, just basically a, a Model 15 that they rebranded as uh, a high standard. So I was really uh, pleased to find this at the gun show. It's not something you find very often. And uh, this right here, I don't know if you can read it, probably can't. Let's see if I can hold it still there. I don't think you can read that. It's really kind of tough in this light. But it says uh, high standard. And underneath that, it says Hamden, Connecticut, USA. And then, of course, the uh, serial number is below that, which I've uh, taped off. Okay. Show you the bottom of it here. So the front side is integral with the the rib, the barrel rib, and uh, does not have the blue or the the plastic insert on it. Again, the the barrel is removable. Use that tool I just showed. And so you can actually change this out. If you had a Dan Wesson, Wesson shorter barrel, it would work fine on this model, as long as it's for the, you know, compatible with the, the 15, model 15. I guess the 14 as well would probably work because the barrels would be the same. Okay, very cool. Uh, also, let me open up the cylinder here for you just to show you that. Something that uh, I really like about uh, revolvers from this time period, a lot of them, is that the uh, chambers are recessed so that the 357 Magnum cartridge will sit down flush with the cylinder so the rims sit down in there. And of course, uh, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here, here's a 357 Magnum round and uh, let me drop that in there so you can see what I'm talking about. Do that for you. All right, so you can see how that sits down flush with the back of the cylinder. 
right, kind of cool. I think that's uh, that kind of level of support on the round, especially with a higher pressure round like 357 Magnum is really nice. And, uh, you know, the, the condition is in it's very good condition. It does have a ball detente in the back. And then as you can see here on the crane, it's got a lock up right there. Oops, where am I going here? See the lock up that, that fits into a recess up here in the frame to lock it up. So very, very sturdy. Of course, people familiar with the Dan Wesson know that this is a very uh, strong action on here. Probably comparable to a, you know, a Ruger in terms of strength. You can see how thick the top strap is. This is a heavy, pretty heavy dude. Uh, I have not had the pleasure of shooting it yet, although I can tell it has been shot uh, a good amount. And uh, anyway, it seems to be in, like I said, very good, uh, very good condition. So I'm kind of looking forward to getting it out to the range and, and checking it out. Here's what, what the uh, sight picture looks like. Let's see if I can line that up for you. So that's what that looks like. And again, it's uh, double action and single action. That might be the long throw. I'm not sure. I don't know what, how short the short throw was. But it's, it was right in this time period that they were transitioning over to the long throw. So, and I think uh, the serial number on mine indicates this was made in 1973, best I can tell. So that should have been right after they, they went to the, what they call the long throw for Dan Lesson. So, trigger pull is excellent. The trigger pull on the double action is probably about 8 pounds or so, maybe 10, but very smooth. The action is very, very smooth. Okay, grips are kind of beefy. All right, but uh, have kind of medium fat hands, I guess you could say, All right? And uh, fits my hands fine. And I feel comfortable with the uh, where my pad actually falls on the uh, smooth trigger. And uh, but it feels good. All right, that's it. I just thought I'd share that with you. And uh, everybody have a great day. And uh, thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos or be notified, please subscribe. And, of course, if you, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks, everybody.